Hey everyone, how is it going? It is your pal Sal here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm in the process currently of ranking the albums of all of the artists that I've listened to this year. And currently right now we are about to talk about Miss Kylie Minogue. So as many of you know, I tackled all Almost all. So hang on, I gotta make a quick announcement real quick. So Kylie Minogue has 15 albums and I reacted to all 14 of them. So I was originally gonna do this year, I was gonna also react to Kylie Christmas, but I've also told you guys before that I've listened to it before. And with timing this year and just the fact of that album, because as we all know, I do, I do bonus tracks on this channel. It's... <laughs> It's so long and I was like, I'm not really in the mood right now for Kylie Christmas and I thought, you know, maybe next year uh, Well, I know I'm gonna do it next year. So next Christmas I'm, I didn't listen to the album at all this year So next Christmas I'll that way it'll have been at least two years since I've listened to the full album We'll talk we'll tackle it then but I mean either way I don't include Christmas albums on my on the uh, on these top, you know, whatever lists So it's not that big of a deal, but just so you know next year. I promise uh, and uh, that's really it there. So I, um, this list, you know, trying to figure out what are my, what are my top favorite Kylie Minogue albums. This was tough. I mean, when you have 14 albums, it's like, how do you, how do you rank them all together? And it, it's hard, but I think I did it. And now I'm looking at the list though too. And I'm like, hmm, I'm like, I don't know, maybe I would place that above that. I don't know. It's hard. So this is the list I wrote and this is what I'm sticking with. So without further ado, I think we should begin with, we're going to go from least favorite to favorite. And that is number 14. The word is out. It is, let's get to it. Now I want to say before I grill, like grill this album or what's the, what's, I'm using the wrong term. Either way, um, before I take it down, um, it's grown on me. I found that I, I've enjoyed some parts of it. Uh, it's grown on me since the first listen. However, this is one, there, there was only one album that actively angered me this year and one album that actively, uh, <laughs> one song that actively angered me. Um, and this was the album that acted, actively angered me. I don't know why, but for some reason, me and this album just weren't gelling. It went on far too long. I feel like there's not a whole, I don't know, there's just not a whole lot of amazingness in here. Songs I do like are Word Is Out, Give Me Just A Little More Time, uh, Finer Feelings, If You Were With Me Now. I, let's Get To It Has Grown On Me, you know, a little groove. We, we like that. Uh, um... Yeah, yeah, that's really where it ends. It just becomes noise at a certain stage of the game, and I just was a little over it. Uh, this album cover has grown on me, though. I do like, I do like her being a little, you know, a little like, ooh, there's the men around me. I feel that. So, but yeah, I think that this is just honestly, it's not a good album. It's just, it, it is what it is. Okay, album number thirteen. So this is actually going to be rather controversial uh, because it's Fever. Um, listen, I, this album in a weird way reminds me a lot of Kelly Clarkson's Breakaway because I covered that this year. And the thing with this album is, is that I love the singles, like iconic, amazing, but as an album, don't really need it. Like, I feel like this is Kylie's least album album. I feel like it's just a bunch of songs. They put them together and made an album. It reminds me of the PLW, like, you know, era, but just a little less, uh, um, how do I put this? Like didn't age as well. And not that I think it aged badly, because there are some good songs on here. But again, as an album, I was just kind of over it. Uh, the songs I absolutely love are Love at First Sight, Can't Get You Out of My Head, Fever, Give It To Me, um, Come Into My World. I've come to the conclusion that I don't really care for that song. Uh, In Your Eyes, The Dance Floor, uh, Your Love, I for, actually I forget how Your Love goes, Burning Up and Whenever You Feel Like It. But other than that, I don't know. It's just... Again, it's not an album to me. It's just a bunch of songs, and that is what it is. I will say, though, most iconic album cover. I mean, how can we... We can't... I mean, come on. We know. We When you know, you know. Okay, album number 12 is her debut, Kylie. Now, I have to say, this... Uh, I put this... I, I really struggled. I was like, okay, you gotta... Sal, you gotta think Fever is better than this. And I was like, eh... You know what? No, because here's the thing is that stuff from the early 2000s just doesn't age as well as I think it should. Sometimes it's great. Some other times because we were experimenting with digital sounds, it doesn't always, you know, age as well. With Kylie, because I think it has those 80s, like organic, like synth, well, again, synthesizers, but there's still a little bit of realness in here. Um, 
I thought it aged really well, and some of the songs are just really, really sweet, and you know, uh, they're just so nice. Uh, it's it's hard to not have this album put a smile on your face. I mean, with the songs like I Should Be So Lucky, The Locomotion, Genesis, Pop, or, oh my god, I always, I always screw up that name, but uh, it's, no, it's No Secret, we love that. Um, Got to be certain. I like that the hooks of all these songs are just so catchy. Um, and it's just a pleasant album to listen to, I think. Uh, yeah. Album number 11 is Enjoy Yourself. I have to say, this one, uh, I really do like it. I find it interesting that people say that this album you know, it sucks compared to the first, because I think that the writing and the production is just, it takes a little, it's a little more mature than the first one, and I feel like it just has, I, I don't know, something about this album, I really do groove with a lot of the songs on here, and this album features, like, my, what I would rank as my top 10, like, if I was to do top 10 Kylie songs I didn't know before going into, you know, learning Kylie, this has my number one song I've learned, which is I'm Over Dreamin' Over You. The fact that that song was not a single is shocking to me. It's so good. I love every it's much too late my love just can't wait I, I love I love singing along to it it just oh my god it puts a smile on my face some of the other songs like I knew all the singles going into this one um, but one of the ones that I really did like to my secret heart um, what was it uh, enjoy yourself I really do like it kind of reminds me of like a better production of what we heard on let's get to it um, uh, what else is there on here? Never Too Late, that's really good. Um, the Telltale Signs, that's a sweet one. There's just, I feel like it's a, not a huge step up, but I think it is a bit of a step up from the first album. Okay, album number 10 is Rhythm of Love. Now, again, I really feel like, I feel like the PL, P, what is it, PWL or PLW, I don't know what I've been saying, but you, you get the drift. Um, I honestly think all of the albums, you know, minus Let's Get To It, are fine standard albums, and I do believe that the best of them is the Rhythm of Love. The one thing I did find interesting going into this album is that I learned that Ma that Kylie was inspired by Madonna's Like a Prayer, and I don't, I don't get that at all from this album, but inspiration comes in many different ways, and if it led to her best album out of this era, I'll take it. Uh, again, knew, knew all the singles going into this one. Some of the songs that I learned that I really do like are Secrets, uh, The World Still Turns, that's, that's, that's just a fun way, it's fun, you know, The World Still Turns, you're like, da 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 da. Um, one of the shockers on here was One Boy Girl. Uh, I'm a one boy girl, and I was like, oh, Kylie, you are. Um, <laughs> things can only get better, count the days, one, two, Three. Again, what I like about the P, what is it PWL or PLW? I don't remember. I'm so sorry. But is that the, the hooks of these songs are just really sweet. They, they, they could have maybe expanded a little more, but I think they're so sweet that that makes them stick out. And I do appreciate that. And I love this album cover too. It's so 90s and we love the 90s. Okay, album number nine is X. The reason why I think that this one's maybe just a tad lower is that th this album is just, there's so much to it. There's the album that was released, the a million different songs that were kind of released, weren't kind of released. It's just like, there's so much going on with, with X. And <laughs> it's like, how do you compel it into one, one little album? Uh, one of the things I will say is that there are a lot of good songs on here. And I thought about it and I was like, I prefer actually maybe a couple of these songs to stuff that I would hear on, you know, again, um, Fever. Uh, one of my favorite songs that I learned off of this album and doing this is All I See. A lot of people say that All I See is basically Kylie's take on like a Janet Jackson song. And while I'm not as familiar with Janet Jackson's discography as I'd like to be, just a heads up, that's going to be changing this February. Um, I do, I do see that from what I do know of Miss Miss Jackson, and I love All I See. It doesn't really fit with the album, but I do like the song. Um, I, what else are, what are some of the other songs? I'm trying to focus on the ones that I didn't know, because we all know what I thought of the, you know, the singles and whatnot. Um, wanted to write a song called Cosmic is Fun. New, new, did 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 t did I think that that one is so fun. Um, stars, eh. I, 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 it's okay. No More Rain is really sweet, knowing that it's about her, her, you know, her breast cancer struggle. Um, I'm happy she made it through. Um, uh, and now here's the thing, is that this is what I gotta say. Um, I don't get why everybody likes speakerphone. So I've tried, and I've tried, because I was shocked at the love that that song has. Like, I'm, I'm still legitimately shocked by the power of love that that song has. Um, I've grown to, uh, like, like it. Like, I can, I can, um, I can do it, play it on your speed, but I, as far as the standom that it has, it's shocking to me. I'm, again, shocked. Um, 
and I'm gonna leave that there. I just gotta say that. But uh, I do like uh, this album when you listen to the regular standard version, it's a good listen. Um, kind of crazy. Out of the bonus tracks of the songs that I like, I do like, um, what is it, King or Queen? Um, what, what's the one where it's like, oh, uh, oh, 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 I don't know. Okay, I, it's not coming to me at the top of my head, but you get the drift there. So there are some, oh, it, is it Magnetic Electric? I think that's it, yeah. But um, also I should mention this, uh, I forgot, I might as well tell this, this little tale here. Um, one of the songs that I knew from the X sessions that I forgot to tell you guys about uh, was because it was also kind of a Paula Abdul song was Boombox uh, because I really do love my my Paula Abdul my my gift as she likes to call herself and I I forget the whole drift of what was going on there who got that song first or whatever but I've heard the leaked part well it's like a fan edit of it because like only snippets of the Paula version leaked but the full version of Kylie's version of Boombox did leak as well and I do like Boombox so I forgot to mention that there and I'm fixing that now okay album no this is really funny guys i have to i have to tell you something right here i'm on my list i'm switching these two because i realized that i was wrong so i'm actually this is live on the spot but uh album number eight is light years so with light years it really comes down to is that uh i think that it's a really good album and what i find interesting is that this was paired really with um you know, a fever. Like these are the two like pop comeback albums. And uh, I just think Light Years is a much more fun experience. I like that it's more experimental in its production and its lyricism. Uh, there's so many uh, fun songs that I learned off of this. Uh, Disco Down, I mean, come on, that's that's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> um, Bittersweet Goodbye is absolutely beautiful. Butterflying, I'm still not sold on that one. I know a lot of people like that, but eh, it's okay to me. Um, Under the Influence of Love, Traveling Light Years. I didn't realize that how much I loved that song until Kylie did it on Infinite Disco. Travel, I mean, come on, it's, ep that's epic. In a weird way, I do kind of wish they could have found a way for it to start with Light Years. That's more of a me thing, um, but it's like, I know it's like at the end, it's like, thank you for flying KM Airlines. Um, but I do, I do really like Light Years, and I think that I just love this album cover. Um, if I was to pick out of all the albums that I would love that are on the rare, because, you know, Kylie vinyls are rare. Like, the ones that are, like, from this era and all that, rare. Um, this is probably the one I'd want to own the most because it has my favorite album cover out of all of them. Okay, number seven is Aphrodite. Uh, so with Aphrodite, I really grown to love this album a lot more because of watching the tour. Thank you again to everybody who watched that video. I know that you guys really enjoyed it and I enjoyed having you guys watch it. It was amazing. Um, this tour made it really grow on me. I really have grown to love. I, at first I remember not really loving this album cover because I thought it looked like a perfume ad. In a weird way, I still think it does, but I've grown to love it. Um, again, we all know my thoughts on the singles and especially Get Out of My Way. Ugh. The blessed song get out of my way but uh the songs that i really got to know because of listening to it um better than today is really beautiful uh illusion you know that's that's lovely uh what are okay so it's the other ones that are at the bottom here but uh looking for an angel ah uh, for an angel um uh, what is the other one? Heartstrings. You're pulling on my heartstrings. I have Mighty Rivers. I think the one that's really grown on me because I put it in my workout playlist was Go Hard or Go Home because I want to go hard or go home. And I think it's just an epic album. I think that it's kind of... It reminds me a lot too. I think that's probably why I had him flip-flop. But uh, it reminds me a little bit of Light Years and the fact that it's a little cheeky. But I mean, come on. We love Cheeky Kylie. So it is what it is. Okay, number six. This is going to be controversial putting it up this high. But... Uh, it's Kiss Me Once. Uh, I think because I knew this one going in, I really do like a lot of the songs um, from, from you know, just listening to it the first time, still when I do it this time. Uh, I still uh, really do love Million Miles. I think I was going to cancel. Uh, you know, now I've started to learn that I really like Pharrell, uh, especially knowing that he wrote it. And when I learned that a, a Miley Cyrus song that I really liked was written by him, the fact that I love Madonna's Heart Candy. I might be interested in more Pharrell's, you know, music. Uh, I, I really do like I Was Gonna Cancel. Uh, Sexy Love, Sex Exercise. Uh, Feels So Good grew on me. It's not my favorite, but it's grown on me. If only. Um, le Love, Le Sex. Uh, Kiss Me Once. Uh, a lot of these have grown on me. I think that it reminds me a little bit, this album, again, it reminds me of MDNA. It reminds me of Lotus. Uh, the production could be better. I think that there are a lot of uh, things that could be fixed. And then it could be, I think that it would, people would like this better if the production was more in, on par with Aphrodite. Uh, 
which it could be. I feel like it just really needed some cleaning up. It sounds a little muffled, but other than that, I like it and I like this cover. I It's a shame about this era. I did end up seeing, uh, because here's the thing guys, I've talked about this before. Everyone's like, Sal, Sal, you have to watch the music videos. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I My heart is just not in filming music video reactions. I've said that before. I ended up watching the uh, video for I Was Gonna Cancel and everyone was right. I mean, she just stands there. And I was like, who, who let this, I could have filmed a better video in my apartment. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's that's Kiss Me Once. It really is up to you. I feel like where you want to put this one, but I do like it. Album number five is Discar. And that's how, like how she says it, you know, with the R. But um, Disco. And uh, so here's the thing. This album is nothing if not her most consistent pop album, in my opinion. It is a very good length. Um, if you even count out the uh, bonus tracks. And there's not one bad song on here. There's two that I don't love. But I think that, it's, again, consistency is key. Um, I know we haven't gotten to Golden yet. We'll get there. And I think you know what spot that one's at. But the only thing that I think is that she took that we lost from Golden was the uh, personal songwriting. Um, this one doesn't feel as personal, but I think because she took all the elements that she had with Golden, you know, writing it, everything, and that's all evident here, and I think this is more of what the fans wanted, because let me just tell you something, for those of you who down Golden, you don't get Disco without Golden, I'm just saying, uh, but Disco is nothing if not consistent, there are so many potential singles on here, uh, Real Groove is incredible, <laughs> uh, Supernova has grown on me, Monday Blues has grown on me, uh, Last Chance, um, uh, Where Does the DJ Go, Dance Floor Darling, the only songs that I really honestly just don't really care for are uh, Unstoppable and Hey Lonely. Um, wait, no, no, it was Spotlight. No, I do like Hey Lonely. I'm an idiot. It was Spotlight, but Spotlight's been growing on me a little more. Unstoppable is still kind of like, okay. Uh, but realistically, this album could have been, I mean, if she had cut, I mean, honestly, she could have cut Spotlight and could have cut Unstoppable and just made it like a, what would that be? A 14 track album? That's a nice length. Um, but when you have all 16 songs, it's only 54 minutes. It almost leaves you wanting a little more. Uh, having it on vinyl is really good. I think that this album cover was at first a little jarring, but I've grown to love it. You know, Miss Kylie and her little star. Um, I should also say, Say Something, my top single of the year. I love Say Something and... Uh, again, this album is nothing if not consistent, and I appreciate that. It's it's such a pleasant listen. Okay, album number four. We have Kylie Minogue, 1994. So this album is nothing if lush. I think the production on everything is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, learning the songs that I didn't know, it's just, I think that this album is just so... What I love, too, is that... I, I, oh, I can't see this because I have the two-disc version that's imported into my iTunes. But, um... It's, it's so, it's like such a quick listen and there's so many like fun songs on here and fun fact, this is one of the albums, because this one's not hard to get on vinyl, one of the albums I asked for for Christmas. Um, I think the songs that I love that I didn't know going into here were Surrender, If I Was Your Lover, uh, Put Yourself, well I, I didn't know that, but da Dangerous Game? Oh my god, the, the Bond theme that never was. Dangerous Game is so, oh, when I think of that, da da da, ba da da, ba da, oh, oh wait, hang on, actually, you know what, I don't, I haven't been playing, no, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, I was like, I have to hear it, um, automatic love, that's so lush, um, falling in love, falling in love, I love a good whisper vocal, and time will pass you by, I mean, what a lovely ending to a lush album, I mean, I love it, it's, again, if nothing, if not, cons again, consistent, and, uh, only a, only the small hint of what was to come. Okay, album number three. We have Impossible Princess. Now, before I, I keep on going, I still have to say, I really just, I don't like this album cover. I hate her hair like, I hate her hair like this, and I'm not afraid to admit it. And y'all can come for me and say I have the same haircut. You know what? Fine. I don't care, but I still don't like it on her. And I'm just, I have to, I have to get that out of here. But now we're moving past that and talking about the brilliance that is this album. Um, Again, if nothing, if not consistent, it's... It's very much the sister album to Madonna's Ray of Light. And what's crazy to think is that this album came out at the, like just a few months before it. But um, it's just so incredible. Like just the way it's structured, the way the production sounds, the, everything about it. Uh, when we, how we open with Too Far and like 
the just the like this album was like talking about mental health and mental awareness like years before like the, these conversations were really coming to light uh, you know and while sonically and production wise it is very similar to uh, Ray of Light I think lyrically it's rather different Le Madonna was going through a much different thing than Kylie was going through here uh, but cowboy style uh, some kind of bliss you did it again breathe breathe um say um, drunk grew on me. Actually, I don't remember. I don't need anyone. I'm gonna have to re-listen to that one. But I jump. Um, limbo through the years and dreams of the impossible princess. One thing I will say is that for this album, the bonus tracks don't need them. The album flows so nicely that they're just kind of like they're there, but I don't need them to me. Um, this album is nothing if perfection, almost utter perfection. Just the way it's structured. Um, in all honesty, it is Kylie's best album. For me, it's three because of the other two, but I stand Impossible Princess. I'm so glad because again, I, again, I know I've said what I about the album cover, but that's what was keeping me away uh, from this album. And you just have to learn you can't judge a book by its or you can't judge an album by its cover um, because you might just end up loving it. But uh, it's amazing. Okay. Album number two. This one might be a tad controversial, but uh, I don't care. It's body language. I am so here for bad bitch Kylie. I love, I love everything she's saying on this album. Like I and this album are one in the same. Um, with how we start with slow, still standing, say, here's my secret. I'm a girl who likes her fun. Um, promises, sweet music, um, robbed. Sweet music should have so been a single. Um, red blooded woman. Oh my God, a red blooded woman. Chocolate, um, obsession. Uh, oh my God. Some uh, someday, what is it? Loving these are loving days. Um, I again, I still don't really care for I feel for you. I would have taken that out and slotted. Um, oh god, what's the bonus track called? I don't have it right here on my computer. Um, oh my, hang on, I actually have to pull it up because it's such a good song. Um, what is it? Um, slow motion mm, and cruise control. <sighs> Oh my god. Uh, it, it, yeah, this album, I just love everything about it. It's a shame that this era was like, you know, not really expanded upon because I like it a lot. Um, I love her look. Uh, I Everything about this album to me is just, I, I love bad bitch Kylie and I hope one day, she came out a little bit for us in, uh, in uh, what what is it? Oh my god, disco. But uh, I would like a full bad bitch album one day again and hopefully we'll get it. Still, we still got time. Okay, album number one, it's golden. Uh, this is should come as no surprise. This is the album that introduced me to Kylie. And I tried hard to say, uh, <laughs> okay, Sal, maybe this isn't your favorite album anymore because I think with a few of the other artists I've done, uh, it was, well, with Miley, when I tackle Miley, um, I, my, the album that I grew in loving the most or went in loving the most isn't my favorite album anymore. Uh, but with this, it's still golden. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and you know what? I would fight a little bit for this. I really do think that this album has Kylie's best lyrics. It's the most personal album. It's I I understand maybe if country isn't a lot of people's thing, but I think I would call this light country. Um, I just think that it's such a mood. It tackles emotions that I think we all go through. I mean... Uh, dancing, Stop Me From Falling. With me, Golden, the fact that she released that single, you know, right as she turned 50, is just beautiful. Uh, One Last Kiss, Live A Little, Shelby 68. I mean, everything on here is so gorgeous. I didn't realize this, but I think I went a little, uh, like, tough on Lost Without You, and I don't know why I did that, because I'm like, Sal, you love that song. And people were like, Sal, how could you? And I was like, I didn't even realize I had. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah golden it just for me it's the album that introduced me to her i still will stand maybe it's not your groove but i really do believe that these have her best lyrics her most personal lyrics she wrote everything on here um and it's just gorgeous and i i love the the golden hues of everything on the i mean i think it's just great and uh it's gonna be ever hard for me to, for something to top this but <sighs> I love it. And I am so grateful I went on this journey with you guys to tackle all of Kylie's albums. Um, uh, to date, this is my biggest discography journey. By come uh, with the plan I have for 2021, uh, it won't be anymore because I'm tackling. You see her behind me. 
Um, I'm going to be tackling all of her studio albums uh, throughout uh, 2020. Oh my God. <laughs> We're going to have some fun though. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I can't believe I did this, but I'm, this is why I'm so grateful I do this is that I, like I said, you know, a lot of people on the, what was it? The Say Hey Facebook page hate me uh, for listening to these albums. But the one thing that I like about this for me uh, and what I've learned through doing this channel is that doing these videos forces me to listen to these albums, to know these albums, like to finally sit down and say, say hey, and listen to them. And I'm happy that I do that. And it's because I feel like I'm not gonna have this time in my life, you know, coming in the future when we can have lives again. Uh, and I figured why not get this, why not get, get it done now and, and have some fun and make a video while doing it. Cause uh, if I don't, then I'm probably not gonna do it just with, you know, cause that's life. Um, but I'm grateful every day that I did Kylie's journey and that I know her so well. Uh, I feel very proud because, you know, all the all the gays in America, they're not focusing on Kylie. They're focusing on whatever these artists that we have here in America are. Um, and I'm like, absolutely not, <laughs> as Deborah Cox would say. Uh, so... No, I'm happy. I'm happy very much so that I've gone through Kylie's albums and I, I know her now. Me and Kylie, we're pals. Uh, so thank you again to everybody who's watched my Kylie discography journey. Next year we'll tackle Kylie Christmas, I promise, but I was just a little burnt out by doing Christmas albums. <laughs> Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. What are your Kylie albums ranked in order? Let me know in the comments below. As always, do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Salvador J. Rocha, and I will see you guys very soon. Have an amazing night, day, wherever it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.